Hi viewers, thank you so much indeed for joining us today on Get Well, Stay Well with myself, Cyrus, and I'm delighted to be joined by our lovely Felicity. How are you doing? I'm doing really well, thank you, Cy. Are we really live? We're on. We're okay. recording. Terrific. <laughs> well, we've got a super film today on uh, the vegan lifestyle. In fact, I, I really want to clarify that because you could have beans on toast. You know, you could have baked beans on toast and say that was a healthy vegan. Yes idea and in fact it's not at all yeah so I think it's more about going back to God's diet which of course on Revelation TV we really prefer to talk about that and Genesis 129 and 30 so it's fruits vegetable seeds nuts and green plant yeah. not just vegan which could be as I say beans on toast exactly and it's interesting you say that Felicity because we've got some of our colleagues in the studio who are who are vegan at the moment they're going through a vegan diet at the moment and they've done the research and they've looked at the different types of food that they can actually be eating. And within that is a certain brand of chocolate biscuits. And they're saying, but I'm on the vegan diet <laughs> and it's very healthy because it's vegan. But mm. would you like, we've got uh, the guy actually who's eating this vegan biscuits is directing our program. And perhaps you can talk to him and say what you feel. Well, there you go. You see, the body will tell you if it's really going to work or not. And if you're keeping lots of weight on and you can't shift it, then you're on the wrong diet, basically. And, you know, the body will always adjust to the healthiest that it can be. Mm. So once we get onto the fruit and the vegetables, basically, uh, we're going to be much, much healthier. But as we know, toast just turns to uh, sugar in the body, yes. you know, as soon as we yeah. eat it. So it's not healthy at all. But, uh, and of course, beans, once they're baked, not the same as fresh, beautiful beans that we pick from the garden, yeah. for instance. So we have to be selective when we say vegan. And I had, uh, I had a lovely chat with Leslie yesterday. You know, we met and had a catch up, which was great fun. And we were talking about this vegan, this vegan thing. And um, yeah, we have to clarify it and make absolutely sure people know. I'm really based on God's diet, the Genesis 1, 29 and 30. Mm. And I think it's important that people realize it's about the living enzymes, it's about the vitamins, the minerals that you get in the raw food. Once you cook food, we get something called leukocytosis, mm -hmm. which is the white blood cells really rebelling and saying, what on earth are you feeding me here? So that what causes happens, inflammation. When we, uh, we boil, boil our vegetables, for example, we boil our broccoli, our carrots, are we losing nutrients there? You're losing a little bit, yes, because you know you get this wonderful steam that comes out and smells wonderful in the kitchen. So part of the goodness is actually coming out. So of course the raw food diet is wonderful. That's why, you know, the easiest easiest food in the world is pick a banana, you know, pick an apple off a tree, and there you are. You can. Yeah. It's the fastest food in the world, and it's also the best food for you. So uh, it depends what they've been sprayed with, of course. Yes, of course. That's another yeah. thing now. So yeah. uh, with the, you know, with the chemical spraying, of course, things are no longer as healthy as they used to be. So where is the best place for us to do our <laughs> shopping, our weekly food shop? Well, I try to go to the farmer's market, as you know, on the Wednesday and the Saturday morning when we do actually have the farmers come down and, and bring their produce, which is beautiful and grown yeah. in fields around where we live. And how does the price compare to some of the uh, produce that you'll be purchasing in a supermarket and compared to a farmer's well, market? Well, it can be a little bit more. If it's, uh, if it's really organic, it can be more. But the thing is, once you cut out the meat and the chicken and the fish, you know, those are the expensive things. It's exactly true. I think the most costly thing you can have on your, on your shopping list are things like the meats and the fish. Um, and it's when you just change your diet to just fruits and vegetables, mm. you'll notice the price difference. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And the body, as I say, the body will always react to the right foods. You know, as soon as you start getting on the fresh fruits and vegetables, the body will suddenly starts to respond, you know, and you feel so much better. You have more energy. You mm. know what it's like to have a healthy breakfast and you feel really good when you go out. But if you've had the old eggs and bacon that I used to do, um, or you know heavy heavy meals of any kind then you're really tired before you start the day because it takes a lot of energy to actually digest food yes now there's a film that's come out now isn't it called the vegan film the vegan film Tell yes us a little bit about well that. it's quite interesting it's quite new it came out at the end of 19 uh, of uh, 2017 
and it's uh, it's been put together quite well, I think, and it explains how the the food um, the food businesses, the corruption that's gone with people actually sponsoring the the food companies are actually sponsoring, say, the Diabetes Association or the Heart Association, mm -hmm. and so you're getting uh, these associations who are really wanting funding um, and they get funded by say the dairy and the meat mm -hmm. um, organizations yes so you're not getting uh, what's really good for people which the doctors now say and the scientists say uh, you're getting what the food manufacturers want to sell mm. excellent interesting okay well here's a little trailer talking about the vegan film let's have a look at this now Films that provoked major change came out, and awareness grew around the collusion and corruption in government. Through many mechanisms, the government is very supportive of legislation that protects the animal food industry. The U.S. government is responsible for the fast food crisis, the health crisis, the environmental crisis, by subsidizing this horrible food, by subsidizing animal agriculture. Our taxes are being used to subsidize the production of the food that kills us. A lot of money is being made selling people highly concentrated animal-based foods, and a lot of advertising, promotion, and education is being pr promulgated in the interest of promoting these foods. You go to these conferences and it's sponsored by McDonald's and Coca-Cola. 18% of our gross national product is now going into the health industry. That's insane. We operate from the disease model, meaning that we are in the business of treating sick people. We are not in the business of trying to keep people from becoming sick. Money talks. The hospital actually benefits from McDonald's selling more food and more Big Macs. The most prestigious medical body in the world when it comes to cancer says, Processed meat, category one carcinogen. We are as certain that processed meat causes cancer, that, oh, that plutonium causes cancer, and asbestos causes cancer, and cigarette smoke causes cancer. Done. No scientific debate. It's reprehensible for a doctor treating a three-pack-a-day smoker for bronchitis not to tell them stop smoking. In the same identical way for the person who's clogging their arteries, making themselves diabetic, inflaming their tissue from what they're eating, for the doctor not to say, change your diet. The meat, dairy, and egg industry um, are having quite significant um, influence on the information going out to doctors. That industry also has co-opted universities, influential scientists, even charities, to then give information which are based on half-truths. American Heart Association has an industry nutrition advisory panel where you can pay $10,000 every single year if you're a McDonald's or the Beef Checkoff or Coca-Cola, and they will give you special access to the nutritional policy advisors. I think that the medical profession engages in an all-out campaign to create doubt. Again, these are not my slides. This is a U.S. government program. What do we want to do? We want to trigger cheese craving. So let's talk about the American Diabetes Association, which accepts money from uh, Oscar Mayer processed meats. Corruption has worked its way into the health industry. Doctors are not taught. They get their knowledge how everyone else gets their knowledge, basically, through the media. Here's the problem. When you're talking about preventing disease, there's no one-size-fits-all. So if you say meat is bad, that's not necessarily true for everybody genetically. You'll die as an infant if you don't eat animal products. Grilled chicken is very good for you, madam. There is a lot of misinformation in the public space about health, and it fosters confusion unnecessarily because it's not really that confusing. The overwhelming majority of the evidence supports nearly exclusively. That's called the vegan film, and do go out and have a look and see if you can watch that. Felicity, tell us a little bit about the importance of it, exposing some of this information through films because we, it's how we can get this information, do the research. It's all been done there for us. And it's fantastic how many of these health films are available. It's amazing how they've all come out in the last, certainly the last three or four years. Yes. You know, while we've been doing these yeah. Get Well, Stay Well films. And it's such a joy to be able to get lovely, fresh things yeah. you know, with good quality that yes. uh, you will approve of as yeah. director. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, I think, so interesting that the truth is coming out because, you know, it's a long time ago since I had cancer and, and even a longer time ago my daughter had cancer. I started learning about this stuff years ago, of course, right. and 
and it was so difficult to persuade people yeah. that what I had discovered was actually true. You know, people argue all the time. But now, really, it's coming out in the films, and people are seeing these things now. You're getting a variety of very bright doctors who are actually bringing the ordinary GPs up to date because mm -hmm. the ordinary GPs have been trained years ago, of course. Well, what's happened to these doctors who are exposing all this information? Have they also changed their their lifestyles and changed their diets? Have they been recently re-educated, so to speak? Yes, most of them have got well themselves. Right. <laughs> because, you know, doctors are under huge pressure and most of them uh, get absolutely exhausted. Nobody wants to go into general practice now because mm. it's so exhausting. Mm. So, um, yeah, it's really interesting that people like Neil Barnard and people like uh, Mark Hyman and all the doctors we feature, they've all got themselves well, basically, uh, by learning this stuff, which they didn't learn in medical school. And, of course, it takes a long time to change things. You know, the medical schools are, t are still teaching a lot of the stuff that they taught years ago, the food pyramid, you know, was always meat at the bottom. You had to have lots of protein, animal protein. We now know the best protein is actually from the plants. Mm -hmm. So things have changed dramatically. And with it, the intelligent people have actually kept up to date with all this mm -hmm. stuff. And they've actually changed their diet because we've never had such an epidemic of heart disease, of obesity, of diabetes, of cancer. Yeah. Never, never before. I mean, the, the figures are much, much worse. And autism in children, and, wow. you know, that's a, different, that's a different thing. But basically, we have to keep our immune system fit. We have to go back to the maker's diet, to what God actually wanted us to do right in creation. And there you are in the book of Genesis, first chapter, you know, there we go. He says fruit, vegetables, seeds, nuts, herbs, and green plant. How long has the, the vegan movement been taking place, so to speak? Because we're only hearing about it quite recently, but has is it, is it obviously been, been around for many, many well, years? Well, you know, that's just a, a label, really. I yes. mean, it's, it's from time immemorial because we started off, you know, with fruits and seeds and nuts, and then the men would go off occasionally and, and kill an animal and bring it back, and, and people would roast it and, and eat it. So basically, um, you were very lucky to be able to catch an animal like that. It wasn't three times a day that you ate, you know, bacon and, yeah. and different uh, foods, different meats and fish and things. So it's, yeah, it's really from time immemorial. But the, you know, the intelligent people in the East, for instance, have based their, their nutrition on rice mm. and vegetables and fruit. And if you think of the tropical countries, you know, people in, in Africa are still eating traditional food and um, you know it hasn't been sprayed it hasn't been treated it hasn't been processed so if some of the viewers are watching us today and they're, they're used to the mad diet the traditional diet that we've all been brought, brought up on as children and they're saying okay Felicity I'd like to do that switch over and I'd, I'd like to become vegan what are the what are the most important factors they need to take into consideration what's the first step well, I think the first thing is to get educated on it. When you've decided in your mind that this is going to be right, you know, you, you want to see the scientific proof that this really works. And uh, cardiologists like Dean Ornish and Corporal Esselstein, you know, they are managing to get their heart patients well without doing invasive heart surgery, mm. where they literally split the chest open, open heart surgery, you know, it's very, very extreme. Mm -hmm. And so by putting people on a vegan diet, they've actually, or I would say a plant-based diet, they've actually got people well and they've stayed well because yeah. the other thing is, Si, that if people had a, a heart intervention and then they go back to eating the same food again, yeah. those arteries are going to block up again within months. Yeah. It's interesting when someone's carrying out treatment in a hospital and, and it's often talked about on our program, especially of the nutrition that they're providing some of the patients who are overcoming cancer during the cancer treatment and yet they're still feeding them with the sugars and all the dangerous kinds of foods as well. They are indeed and the patients are still being given a sugar drink to, um, to bolster them up, to fatten them up, you know, to avoid the cachesis, which is what kills a lot of cancer patients because mm. they get so thin. So they're being given these sugar drinks and, you know, it's absolutely appalling because we know now that 
sugar fires cancer. Mm. Well, we're talking about vegan today and we've got a lovely, delicious recipe to show you now. Let's have a look at this delicious vegan recipe. Now we're gonna make a mango black bean quinoa salad. And I like this recipe a lot because it literally requires no cooking at all. You don't even have to make this in your kitchen. Let's do it. Let's see how it's done. Let's make it happen. I'm going to start by topping up my mango and lime and mincing a shallot. I'm using pre-cooked quinoa and rice and canned black beans. I'm going to combine everything in a bowl, including fresh lime, and I'm going to toss that up with cumin, salt, and fennel seeds. Then add some pre-washed salad greens and a drizzle of olive oil and toss it up again. That's it. Just top with some crunchy pumpkin seeds, chili flakes, and some more lime. Dinner in no time. Oh, that does look absolutely delicious, Felicity. Thank you so much for introducing that to us. Give us an idea of um, quinoa was mentioned there in that video. Why quinoa? What's that? Well, important? a lot of people have changed to that from, from rice and from the, the uh, things that have gluten in, you see. So quinoa is, or some people call it quinoa, yeah. because it's spelt that way, yeah. or quinoa. And when I went to train in America years ago, you know, I learned about it and, and how to how to prepare it. So it's a good alternative because gluten is now uh, causing so many problems. People have got more and more allergic to gluten. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really good to get off the bread and anything that has gluten in it. Mm -hmm. It's now sprayed with glyphosate as well. So there's lots of lots of good reasons for getting onto it. And quinoa, what is the difference in taste? Um, what, Very what? much the same. Yeah. You see, I like to flavor everything with lots mm. of garlic. You know, yes. I just had a, a wonderful garlic and potato lunch, for instance. Lovely. So that's really healthy for me. Uh, I'd much rather have my, my starch in potato than bread. I've yes. tried to eliminate bread. It's only if I go out and I'm at a party and, you know, this delicious nutty bread, perhaps, that yeah. people have baked, then I will eat that because it's fun, I think, to, you know, to keep with, um, the sort of normal diet that we've been used to all our lives as well. Yeah. But but it's what you do most of the time that matters, as I always say. Yes. So if you're based on the vegetables, the fruits, seeds, nuts and green plant, but you do have a little bit of, you know, a little treat with other things from time to time, that's fine. It's what you do most of the time. What about in the evening? Some of the viewers might be watching us today and they, they maybe have, they work late hours, they do night shifts perhaps. Mm. Um, they don't get to have their dinner till quite late. So they probably come home, have the dinner and go straight to bed. What sort of food should we be avoiding at night? And ideally, what could we be substituting that? Well, you don't want anything heavy at night because that's going to ruin your night's sleep. So, you know, that's when I do the vegetable soup, have a beautiful vegetable soup, lots of garlic, lots of onion, lots of leeks, um, particularly particularly good in the, in the cold weather. And then when it's warm, you can just have a salad or fruit. You know, how mm. lovely, mango, we've just been talking about mango, yeah. bananas, yeah. such easy food. Yes. So it makes life very much easier. When I think of the hours I used to spend in the kitchen, you know, cooking meals for everybody. Yeah. And yeah. now, really, it would have been so much better yeah. if I had just had a huge bowl of fruit and some salad and uh, everyone would have been very much healthier. Everyone is now becoming more and more busy in their lives as well, aren't yeah. they? And obviously... Uh, all the, the family are working, so it's yes. the husbands, the wives, the children, and everybody else. And um, so now there aren't maybe don't doesn't have enough time to be preparing feel, big meals for the big, whole family. So it is quite good that you can just prepare a nice little small salad, simple and easy to eat as well. That's right, and doesn't it look delicious? You know, uh, on my dining room table, I have a big bowl of fruit, and it, it looks so delicious. You want yeah. to go and pick a grape, maybe, or yeah. you know, have a a little bit of fruit and it's so easy you can just walk by and graze as they yeah. say you're grazing instead of yeah. sitting down 
I really haven't got time to sit down and have a meal. I never sit at the dining room table and have a meal yes. unless I've got people in and we're entertaining. Yeah, interesting. The next thing we're going to move on to now is talking about the ozone layer, Felicity. Yes. Why have, you, why have you decided to introduce this? Well, I think it's vital because with the geoengineering and the aerosols and the um, solar management that they're spraying you know, to try and reflect the sun back to itself, mm -hmm. they are destroying the ozone layer. Mm -hmm. And when the ozone layer has gone, we will fry, basically. Right. So it's very, very important. I wanted to introduce this. I thought it was fun to have you know, a different topic as well. This yes. is so important. And so really, really important people understand the, the importance of the ozone layer. There's a whole, years ago I discovered that when I went down to Australia and New Zealand, you know, and I got sunburned very quickly, just got off that long flight. It's, I think, 23 hours or something to get down there. And, mm. um, so I went to sleep in the sun by the pool and skinned my back. Wow. So that was a painful lesson. Wow. And everyone said, well, you know, we haven't got, a, haven't got much ozone down here anymore. Yeah. So, wow, that was a lesson. And um, the ozone is breaking up in the, in the Antarctic as well. Okay. So we, we have got a problem and we've got to address it. Okay, well, let's have a look at this next video now. This is talking about the ozone layer. Howdy, chlorofrendocarbons. You've found your way to D-News. Thanks for that. Welcome, I'm Trace. If you are a millennial, you've probably spent your whole life hearing about the hole in the ozone layer. Before you can understand the hole, though, you gotta know what the ozone layer is. The ozone layer isn't really its own thing. Instead, 90% of our ozone floats around in the stratosphere, about 6 to 30 miles above our heads. Ozone is three oxygen atoms linked together, O3. When in the stratosphere, ozone absorbs harmful UVB radiation, protecting us and other life here on the ground in the troposphere. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, people were just beginning to harness the power of refrigeration using toxic gases like ammonia, methyl chloride, and sulfur dioxide. In 1928, an enterprising inventor at General Motors created a non-toxic chemical for refrigeration called CFC, chlorofluorocarbon. It was patented as Freon by DuPont and sold in air conditioners, fridges, bug sprays, spray paints, hair conditioners, and healthcare products. At its peak, companies were making a million metric tons of CFCs every year. Sure, at sea level, CFCs are non-toxic and safe for humans, but if they get into the upper atmosphere, they're subject to photodissociation, where UV radiation breaks a chlorine atom off the CFC. If that free chlorine finds a molecule of ozone, O3, it will react with it, destroying the ozone by ripping off one of its oxygen atoms to make chlorine monoxide, leaving regular old O2 or oxygen in its wake. Then the chlorine monoxide gets hit by UV and broke up again, so it has to find another O3 molecule to try and stabilize it, and the cycle repeats itself. It's bad. In 1977, we were studying the ozone layer, and it was fine. By 1981, there were hints that something was amiss. Then in 1984, scientists suddenly registered a giant hole in the ozone layer. They published their findings, and in 1987, the Montreal Protocol was signed, beginning the phasing out of CFCs shortly thereafter. Meanwhile, even though the house was clearly on fire, DuPont and other companies insisted everything was fine and fought tooth and nail to keep CFCs legal. But they finally relented after scientific evidence became indisputable. A looming environmental disaster that pitted corporations against the scientific community. Where have I heard that before? Wow, that's so interesting. Thanks so much for introducing that to us, Felicity. Mm. It's quite concerned me quite a, um, quite a bit when we saw the the sprays of toxicity that's inside our aircon units, our sprays, our deodorant. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, you see, they have destroyed the ozone layer, and you know they they were using ammonia and methyl fluoride and silver oxide, and uh, the companies were so thrilled to you know, be able to produce freezers for people. This has all happened in my lifetime, of course. It's mm -hmm. so interesting. So uh, when all that came out, you know, we all bought these machines and thought how wonderful now we can store food and we can freeze food and, um, you know, everything will last longer. And, mm -hmm. of course, the, the food companies were thrilled because uh, longer shelf life and everything. So gradually we have destroyed the ozone layer. Mm -hmm. Also with the traffic, of course, the, you know, the emissions from yes. cars, yes. especially in cities. Yeah. There are 40 cities in UK now that the air is unfit to breathe. Mm -hmm. How about that? Incredible. So um, we, we really do have a problem and people have to really learn to um, 
cope without the, all these, these harmful machines. Mm. And of course, it's the spraying as well. So the, all the aerosol sprays that, uh, you know, have become so much part of our cosmetics. So what does some of the viewers, it's, 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 a, it's, summer, it's a summer day and, uh, or it's very hot and the viewers are watching us right now, maybe in different parts of the world. They have an air conditioning unit. What do they do with that now? Well, the thing is, you can have one of those fans, you know, the wonderful fans. That so we around. need to get rid of our air conditioning units? Well, a lot of people are. A lot of people are. And for deodorants and antiperspirants, people are using half a lemon. So they're just doing the armpits, they're washing and then putting half a lemon, which will actually stop uh, the unpleasant odours. So Does that you know, last? How long does that last? It's pretty good. Do you, should it, you carry um, an extra half a lemon in the bag in case? <laughs> you could do. Just in you, case? You could do. <laughs> But also you can use the um, bicarbonate of soda and the coconut, which we've talked about before in another show. And uh, it's just fun to see that we can use natural things instead. And I won't have those aerosol sprays around me anymore. What about perfumes? Oh, they're frightful as well. I mean, they have tuolene in, which is really harmful, all kinds of chemicals. Why do all these, why do they have so many um, harmful chemicals in there? Why hasn't this been exposed? Why haven't we heard about this on well, mainstream only, media, for I, example? I think it's only just coming out how harmful these things have been. Right. Uh, with the amount of lung disease. I mean, the best perfume is essential oils. You can get essential oil of lavender, of rose, of lemon, of yes. grapefruit. Absolutely delicious things, yes. you know, wonderful smells. So those are the only perfumes I use now. I have grapefruit is my favorite at the moment, grapefruit essential oil or lemon. You feel wonderful. You put, the, put that on the body when you after the shower in the morning, you feel fresh for the day. So we talked earlier about vegan. Uh, we talked about the vegan film as well. Just give us your final thoughts to our viewers for the hearing about vegan for the very first time. Well, I healed by going back to God's diet. And uh, when people cut out meat and dairy, they do get very much better. And uh, as Dr. Patrick Vickers says, you know, if you're fighting cancer, you cannot afford to eat meat or drink dairy. OK, Felicity, we have come towards the end of today's programme. Thank you, as always, for joining us. Great pleasure. Oh. Thank you also to our lovely viewers. And do remember that we have a catch-up service on our website. Please log on to www.revelationtv.com. We're also on a wide range of social media, so just do a search on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. It's exciting. We're here to spread the message of Jesus Christ in our lives, but we also want to inspire and encourage you and giving you some education on health as well. Hope today's program has been interesting. We look forward to seeing you the same time next time. Take care. God bless. Bye-bye for now. Bye.